Yo, how's it going everybody and welcome back to this Mantine course and in today's video we're going to be learning about the input and input wrapper components in this library and without further ado let's get into it. And the very first thing that we see right here is a huge disclaimer that says important in most cases you should not use a component the input component in your application. Input components is a base for other inputs and was not directly designed to be used directly. So they give an example right here there's an input wrapper and then they put an input surrounded by an input wrapper, but the correct way of actually doing it is you would want a text input where you can have a label or a description. That's it. Since we're only going to be talking about text inputs in today's video, every single time you see this input, just automatically assume text input. But if you wanted, you can actually use this input tag, which right down here to describe for what purpose it is. The single purpose of input is to provide shared styles and features to other inputs. Use other components listed above to build forms as they provide better accessibility and input component as a base for your own custom inputs with Mantine theme. All right, so if we scroll a little bit lower, we'll see a live demonstration of the text input field in action. This is the thing I really like about this library is the fact that you can live see what you're actually doing. And we see right here in the code, it says input, automatically assume text input in our scenario. Next thing is an icon prop. This icon prop by default places every single icon on the left hand side. You can actually specify to put something on the right hand side, whether it's an icon, a tool pin, uh, sorry, a tool tip or some text, whatever you want. But by default, this icon is placed on the left side. Next thing is a placeholder. The placeholder is just like any other placeholder that you have for a text input. It's some text before you start typing to be visible. And right next to there, we have our variants. We have default, field and unstyled. Filled is just filled and unstyled absolutely has no styling to it. Placeholder, the placeholder like we just talked about. Radius, either we can have a huge radius where the corners will be round as possible, or we can have no radius, a huge size, or no size. We can make it disabled or invalid. And all the code again is live right here. So we can go ahead and just copy this and put it into our app if you wanted. Alrighty, so if you scroll a little bit lower, we'll see our three variants in action. We have the default variant, the filled variant, and the unstyled variant. According to the documentation, the unstyled variant input may significantly impact usability, so we have to use it wisely, or in fact, just probably not use it at all if you can. And then if we scroll lower, we will see the icon and right-hand section. Like I said earlier, the icon is by default on the left-hand side, but you can always specify an icon a tooltip, a chip, or whatever you want on the right hand section. And that's how this is being made right here. Right section and the right section width. And also the styles, right section, pointer events, none, so that when we point over it, nothing happens. If we scroll a little bit lower, we'll see the right section with a tooltip. So this is really simple. All it's doing is that there's a variable right section and it has a tooltip and an info circled icon inside of it. So if we were to hover over it, we will see our tooltip right here. It says we do not send spam and is also being triggered on the right section right here. So it's just calling this variable right here in the right section. And so now if we scroll a little bit lower, we'll see the sizes right here. We have five pre-made sizes, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And we can use a size prop to be able to control the input height, padding, and font size. These examples is extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And this is how you use it. You just have the size prop and you specify in strings which one you want. After that, we can also add a custom component if you want. As input component is intended to be the base of all other inputs, you can pass component prop, which will define the root element. So in this case, they're making a button input right here by using the input prop and the define component is equal to button. And the next thing is an input, which is actually a component of select. So this is actually a select field right here. Next and final thing we're gonna talk about is the headless variant. According to the documentation, if you want to add your own styles to the input, it's better to start from scratch rather than overriding Mantine styles. Use the special headless variant, which does not include Mantine styles, but it still supports all other features, icons, right section, etc. So this is really simple. All you're doing is variant is equal to headless, and that's it. And that'll allow you to be able to add your own style into it if you would like. So in this case, all they're doing is that they're applying a width of 100% and a box sizing of border box, but every single thing works exactly the same. You have your placeholder, you can have your text, you have your left icon, and you have a right side, your right section as well. And finally, we have the basic get input ref. 
All right, so now before we do get our hands dirty with this component, we have to talk about the input wrapper so we can actually work with that and we don't have to worry about talking about it later. So very first thing we see is that there's a disclaimer that asks us do not use the input wrapper with Mantine inputs. It's already included in most inputs. So all you have to do is you have to do the exact same thing, text input, label, and description, and that's it. This already includes the input wrapper on it. After that, if we scroll a little bit lower, we'll see that this usage looks a little bit more different than the one that we talked about right earlier with the input. We'll see that this one has a label, has a description, and an error. And this is really cool. I've never seen this before in any component library where it already, without you having to actually specify what you want in separate divs for a title, a description, and an error, you have it all combined in this input wrapper. All right, now that we've ran through the documentation for both those components, let's get our hands dirty and work with them. So I've opened up the application that we've been building for the past couple of tutorials in the series. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead in my components folder, create a new file, and I will call it input input example.tsx. And I'm gonna put some basic code inside of it. So I'm gonna copy from my chips example inside of my input example, and I'll replace the export default name as well. So I'll just call it input example, like so. And I'll clear out all this information. And I'm gonna quickly import it into my app shell so we have it actually visible. So I'll get rid of my chips example. Well, I'll actually just put it on top of there. So underneath my chips example, what I'll do is I'll do input example like that. And I'll save it and I'll save this. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually work with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this stuff right here. We don't need that stuff. And I'll get rid of this. And what I'm gonna do is I will import text input from the Mantine core library. And if we were to save this and we go into our app, we should see a basic text input right here. It has nothing inside of it, so let's put some icons and some content on the right-hand section right here. So going back into my app, to add an icon, all we have to do is icon, curly braces, tag, and we have to just display what kind of icon you want. So because we are pro grammars, all we have to do is GitHub logo icon, and for something on the right-hand section, I'll do right section. And let's say because we're absolutely friggin' crazy, I'm gonna put in a Notion logo icon. Absolute madness. Anyway, so if we look at this, we'll see an icon right here, and we'll see an icon right here. Let me zoom into a little bit. It might be really hard to see. So we have a Notion icon right there, and we have a GitHub icon right there. But bro, I made this input field just now, but I don't know what it's for. I don't know what kind of uh, what kind of things they want from me. I don't know if it's required or not. Let me let me show you how to do that. It's really easy. It's really easy. All you have to do is you have to write in for the label. I have to write in the label, and in strings I can put in this is the best input field. If I can spell the input field. And if we want a description, all we gotta do is description is equal to, no, this is the best description. And if we want an error, because we're assuming that the uh, user will have an error, we're gonna say, you've, oopsies, <laughs> you've bloody errored. And we're gonna also make this required. And so now what we've done is we give it a label, a title, a description, an error, and we made it required. So now if we go into the app, we'll see right there, we have a title, we have our description, we have our error, and we have our, uh, we have a required as well. All right, so before I conclude this tutorial, let me just show you how to actually define different types of components using the input tag. All you have to do is input, with the self-closing brace, and inside of here, you have to do a component. Oops, you also have to import the component from Mantine Core. So all you have to do is component prop, and then inside of the quotes, you can do the actual component you want. So in this case, I'll do a simple drop-down field. So all I have to do is select, and if I go into the app, it'll be a select field, like so. But there's nothing inside of it. So that pretty much concludes how to work with the input, the input wrapper. How to be able to use it with a text field as well. 
If you did enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.